Hi there, thank you for joining us today. My name is Michelle and I am going to create an artwork in the style of Juan Miro. What you're going to need is some colored pencils, crayons, uh, markers, paints, whatever works for you. Preferably colored pencils. Choose about um, five or six bright colors that you like. We have red, blue, orange, green, yellow, and blue to start with. You're also going to need um, a basic drawing pencil. I like a 4B. It's nice and soft and easy to work with. Um, a color for the background, which I'm going to use a nice warm gray today. And then um, a fine point marker or a ballpoint pen would work fine too. I'm going to use a fine point marker, preferably the color black. And because we're using Prismacolor pencils, I have a blender to use should I choose to do so. So take a look at some of um, Juan Miro's artwork. These are some pieces I did earlier. So on these, I actually did the background color first and then added the shapes over top. I'm trying it a little bit differently this time and I'm going to draw the shapes and then add the background color. And the advantage of that is that areas like this where it's white, I can keep it white by not coloring that in because I've already drawn the shapes in. I know where that white is going to be and I think it creates a nice visual impact on my paper. Let's look at some of the shapes that Miro commonly used. They're kind of silly, total silly making. So we have lines like this, like that. We have stars. Uh, we have other lines with lots of dots. Um, this thing here that kind of looks like it might mimic a plant. Um, eyeballs, lots of eyeballs. And then this funny little character looks almost like um, maybe a human figure. And this looks like it might be a, a dog figure. And then other random shapes, both organic and geometric, mostly organic shapes. And so what I did is I started redrawing them on here. And now that I've redrawn them, I've colored in some of the background. I'm going to draw some more shapes and just work my way down until I feel like it's a fairly balanced composition. Because I want this to be my area of emphasis, this little like human figure here, I am going to copy this and I'm going to draw it so that it's positioned in a way so that it's pointing to that figure. Though I'm leaving a space here, they're not going to touch and they're not going to overlap. Something that Juan Miro did quite often in his artwork is he created shapes that don't touch. They just come very, very closely to each other. And by doing that, you create this beautiful sense of tension between the shapes, for example, between here and here, um, and I will create some more as I go along here. This beautiful sense of tension where it actually activates that negative space between the two shapes that would otherwise be a very quiet place in your composition. So we are going to create some of that tension here with how we draw the shapes. Let's have a triangle right here close to the little foot. And let's draw those funny little squiggly marks because I think they're kind of fun. Notice the sort of wrapping around the foot. I'm doing that on purpose to add a little bit of implied motion here. And gosh, there's so many shapes you could add. If you want to create uh, energy going from one shape to another, you could do something like create maybe a line of stars that go up towards that shape. The great thing about his artwork is that you can add shapes wherever you want to add shapes. Now I'm going to add the color of the background and I really want to keep one side of this white and I want to keep the other side of this white so that I have a choice to maintain some white within those shapes. and you can choose whatever color you want for the background. I'm going to draw more shapes and then keep adding color. But if I were going to add color now, I might go in and ask myself where I wanted to create that color. And when you start to add your color, think about keeping um, the overall color balanced on your page. For example, there's blue here. Maybe that means I want to add blue down here also. 
though, that it's fairly balanced. I do know that a lot of his stars that he drew um, were yellow. So this star up here, I might just color it in yellow, just like he did. Juan Migro used um, many, many bright, bright colors, and he actually came along about 30 years after Matisse. Matisse was one of the leaders of the uh, Fauve movement, or the Wild Beast of Color. Um, Miro continued that movement, uh, but in his own style. And then he uh, migrated into a movement called Surrealism, which was also in good company with uh, Dali, Salvador Dali, who did the Melty Clock pictures and Magritte, who did some pretty silly artwork himself. You'll notice, you'll recognize um, his artwork as uh, a man in a bowler hat with an apple floating above his head in the sky. It's a pretty common image of his. Okay, so you would just continue to add color here until it comes out how you like it. And um, then keep adding shapes. You can just add as many shapes as you want. For example, on this one, I think that maybe there aren't enough shapes on here, so... Perhaps I would add more. Well, the disadvantage of going back over it with a marker once you're done is it's a little bit hard to get it to adhere to the pencil, but you just have to go over it a few times. You can keep adding color. You could start out with a different background that's blue and add as many shapes as you want. Just keep your color continuous so that you ha only have about five or six colors. And when you're done, you will have an artwork that's pretty silly and fun. So thanks. I hope that you give this a try, and thank you for joining me today. Bye.